Well, it's funny. I used to think that living in vision was like, I've got to take a test at a career center. I used to work at a career center. I took every test they had. And I figured, and when they all came together, they all pointed to one thing that I should do with my life. It was to be a florist. <laughs> And I, I had just done, you know, four years of schooling and everything said that I should be a florist. And I thought, that's my vision. Um, but it didn't really speak to me. And so I tried this profession and that profession and everything. And I thought that living my vision was all about a profession, like something I would do. And then I realized, and then I took people on uh, life purpose retreats to Mexico and helping them because you know how you're often teaching what you most want to learn. And so I take people and trying to find this profession. And then at one point in one of these retreats, I realized it's not your profession. It's who you're being when you're doing what you're doing. So you could be a florist or you could be a painter or you could be a traffic policeman <laughs> or you could do anything and uh, and that's when my work started going into the corporate world and working with people about how to bring your your deep creativity to work and how do you be in corrections for example and bring the purpose of who you are to that job or being a secretary or being a CEO of a company that if we're all living from the vision of who we are in that place that somehow everything just starts to work and flow a bit better. We're connected to a deeper source in doing that work. And I think when we're not connected to that deeper source, that's when you find a lot of, or I find, because I work in workplaces, more of the politics and the infighting and the people, you know, stealing from the company and all that kind of stuff is there. But when everyone connects to who am I to be when I do this work, a lot of that stuff just kind of evaporates. It's quite amazing. I was, in, I was listening recently to an interview about um, the word genius and how it used to be in ancient Greece, it used to be actually an external thing that was like an entity that lived in the walls of your writing studio or your yoga studio or wherever you did what you did. And instead of genius, some, a person was a genius. It was uh, something outside yourself that would grace you and would come into you if the, you had created a container into which it felt that it could come and be expressed. And I notice that if I, can, if I can just show up to do the work and if I can create the container that makes the genius want to come play with me, <laughs> that's when I'm living in vision. But if I'm getting all you know, consternated about what I'm doing or pushing too hard or thinking that it's me or my ego doing it and I'm not creating the right container for it, then it doesn't show up and I'm not really living from vision. I'm sort of living from struggle. And, and you know, I think that's part of the human journey. I think we all go through that, finding our way to be, to be the proper conduit for, for the genius to come through. So... It's been, a, it's been an interesting journey to keep opening up, keep opening up to that, those little moments that the genius can, can come in and, and, and light its way so that, I can, so that I can be here of service. And I think if I take those meditative times each morning to just connect and go, I'm here, I'm ready, I'm ready to show up, got the container ready, anytime you want to come over, you know. <laughs> and that's, that's my job, that's my job. That's all, all I need to do, and uh, then I'm, I feel like I'm on, I'm living the vision. It's like that place of being in a lower vibrational consciousness is, I think what I was talking about before, living in, in the struggle, and after a while, it sort of wears you down, and at one point, in most of our lives, I think we hit this place. And for me, it came in my 30s where I hit this wall and I knew that I couldn't go back to what, where I was before and I couldn't go forward. And I either needed to go up or down. <laughs> and in that place of, of, 
and I think we've all faced it at some point in our lives where you hit the wall, you're on your knees, you're prostrate on your knees, you're going, it's not working, life is not working, I need to do something else. And I ask when, I know for me, I've opened up to something greater. I've taken the risk to open up and then in comes some grace. <laughs> in comes some grace and voop, my consciousness goes up and then I'm living the vision and then I can become that conduit for other people. I can become the bridge for other people. So in a way, what we're hitting right now in the world, this wall of the economy's breaking down, I'm kind of excited about it because <laughs> I think a lot of people are going to shift consciousness. We're going to have to go up or down. And, and those are the times when we are activated into a level of creativity that we didn't know was possible for us. And it's a quickening. It's a quickening. I feel it.